Okay, here we go. We're going to make a video here for uh, the solutions to our first set of handouts. And this is for Accounting 1, Chapter 1. So this is uh, pretty basic stuff, but it's stuff uh, if you've never been exposed to it before. There's really no reason why you should know it. So that's why we're going to try to learn it. Let's look right up here at the top. It says... The main objective for all business or for all businesses is to maximize what? We've got four choices, expenses, liabilities, profits, and revenues. Well, expenses reduce net income. We're going to learn about later. Uh, liabilities are debts owed, so we probably don't want to maximize debt. And then we have profits and revenues. Now, most of you, even if you were just guessing, would probably eliminate A and B pretty easily. And that would leave C and D. So revenues, I want to just tell you uh, again, these are all this, you know, these are revenues are the, the monies that come in, the earned uh, monies that come into the business. Okay. But we still have to uh, subtract from revenues expenses. And at the end, we end up with this thing called net income or net loss, hopefully net income. And net income is essentially profits. So it doesn't matter how much our revenues are if our expenses are higher than our revenues. So what we want to maximize here are profits. So let's go ahead and circle that and then move on to the second question. It says, uh, the role of accounting is to provide. Now, before we go any further, there's already something about this question that I don't like. So what I want you to do is I want you to add the word financial. And let's reread this as the role of financial accounting is to provide. Okay, because there are a couple of these that could actually be true. But what we are going to be looking at this semester is financial accounting. And financial accounting focuses on uh, the needs of external users of the financial statements. So when we look at these choices, we've got two. We've got choice A and choice C. Um, that start off with external users. So let's read both of them. Uh, choice A says external, uh, the, the role of financial accounting is to provide external users with financial information to make economic decisions. And then jumping down to C, external users with information helpful in running the business. Okay. Well, we've already eliminated, uh, without even looking at them, just for purposes of time, choices B and D. But let's think about this. If this is an, an external party, why would they be running the business? They wouldn't have anything to do with that. It would be the internal uh, users who would be running the business. So choice C is, is incorrect. Our answer here is definitely A. Financial accounting, the role of financial accounting is to provide external users with uh, financial information so that they can make informed economic business decisions. All right, looks like we have a true-false question. You will never get true-false on your exams, but they do have a they do serve a purpose. It says an example of a general purpose financial statement would be a report about projected price increases uh, related to transportation costs. Okay, so there's, before we can really answer this, now you would, again, if if we were going to do this on a test, you'd have a 50-50 chance without knowing anything. But what I want you to uh, associate in your mind right now is that general purpose financial statements, which you don't know much about yet, but general purpose financial statements relate to financial accounting and we know that financial accounting is concerned with the needs of external users. So what we have here when we talk about a projected uh, a report about projected price increases, okay, 
This report that we're talking about here would be used by managers. And managers equals internal. Okay, they work for the company. So that makes this a false statement because we're not concerned. Uh, general purpose financial statements um, address the needs of external users, not the managers that are trying to maximize profit through their uh, internal type reports. Okay. All right, let's keep going. And it says here, um, right here, says the objective of financial accounting is to provide information which is blank and blank to users. And we've got ethical and timely, relevant and ethical, uh, relevant and timely and necessary and relevant. Okay, so, you know, if you, if you went over the uh, presentation, we do want to be, as accountants, we do want to be ethical. And the the information, you know, we talked about some concepts like faithful representation and so forth. So there is there is an ethical component here, but our answer is going to be C. I'm just going to jump down and tell you the answer is C, and then we're going to discuss it just for a moment. Um, I w you, you could make the argument that if that if information is not timely it loses its relevance. But what we're the reason we're breaking these up here as far as objectives of financial accounting is we have to make sure that the information that we provide is relevant to making decisions, okay, to making economic decisions. And then assuming that it is, we have to get that information to the users in a timely manner before it use uh before it loses its value or before it loses its its relevance okay so this is your answer choice c this can be a little bit confusing because when we you know depending on when we on exactly how the question is worded uh the answers can change but when we talk about the objective of financial accounting it's to provide information that is both relevant and timely all right let's go to the next one it says uh, generally accepted accounting principles regulate how and what. Okay, and we have four choices, whether a company uses a balance sheet or an income statement. Well, that's not a good answer because companies will use both a balance sheet and an income statement. Uh, let's see, internal uh, financial information, or how and what internal financial information is reported by businesses. Well, businesses do not report internal financial information that's internal financial information is kept internally okay trade secrets uh, budget projections these types of things so this is not a good answer either generally accepted accounting principles regulate how and what prices can be charged for goods and services um, this is a bad answer also um, and for a couple of reasons this would either be based on market research, which is internal, or um, in certain situations, there may be a law uh, related to what prices can be charged. That would be set by a regulatory agency outside of the business. Um, but it wouldn't have anything to do with uh, GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. Choice D, financial inf uh, how and what financial information is reported by the business. Because this, inf and this is our correct answer, this information is going to be contained in the financial statements for external users of the financial statements. So let's go ahead and circle choice D. Next question, it says, the blank is the authoritative body that has primary responsibility for developing accounting principles. We have the Security Exchange uh, Commission, the uh, Financial Accounting Standards Board the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, uh, which looks like it's missing a little parentheses here, and the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Well, um, the key here is that choice A, C, and D are all related to uh, publicly traded companies. 
Now, I will tell you that the ultimate authority for everything does rest with the Securities and Exchange Commission, but they have kind of abdicated that authority to the FASB. Okay, and the FASB, uh, Financial Accounting Standards Board, has authority uh, for uh, developing accounting principles for all businesses, whether they are publicly traded or not. So let's go with B. Last question, and then we'll start another video. This one's getting kind of long. Proper ethical conduct implies that you only consider what will be fair to everyone, uh, what will be the consequences of the decision and its effect on others, what will be in your best interest, what will be in the best interest of the shareholders. Okay. Well, um, what is fair to this is this is a this is a little bit tough here i want to tell you that choice a is wrong um sometimes we can we have to understand that some of the decisions that we make in business will have no impact on virtually everyone alive um so when we say make a decision or or implies that you should you should only consider what will be fair to everyone. This is an impossibility because no matter what we do, not everyone will be impacted. So this is a bad answer. Choice B, it says, what will be the consequences of the decision and its effect on others? Um, this is going to end up being the correct answer. However, um, you know, the only thing I would add to this is the way this question is, or the way this answer is worded, I would probably, um, I would probably want to add here relevant others. Okay. Relevant others. Uh, in your best interest is uh, only partially true and in the best interest of shareholders. Now, if this word, if we were to change this, and you're not, from, you're not familiar with this terminology yet, but if this were, say, in the best interest of stakeholders, stakeholders, everyone that's impacted by a business, that would be a great answer. But it says shareholders, shareholders. We also have to consider employees. We have to consider the public. Uh, uh, in general, we have to consider creditors and regulatory authorities, and those individuals are not necessarily shareholders. So, uh, anytime you answer a multiple choice question, you always want to choose the best answer. In this particular case, B is the best answer. Okay, let's wrap this video up.